Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Gordon. We are back for some more Rogue Trader. So we are now making our way back to the Furibunda system because of the companion quests. No, this one here. Trade protected quests. Uh, no, sorry, errands. <laughs> I was confused for a moment. Uh, Jay Hidari celebration. I, I thought this would be under the companion quest, but no. She wants to celebrate on footfall, so we're gonna go back to footfall. I kind of wish there were a way for me to just, you know, just make the ship automatically GPS his way down, but that is not. <laughs> Unless I pay for it, I guess. And eventually I think I'm gonna start using some of my insight to open up those pathways. Like, for example, from Mundus Valencius all the way to Furibundus, to the, to the main systems, I suppose. For right now, I'm just gonna keep traveling this way as I'm not sure how I want to use my points later on. The clan service and the cooling systems have reported an incident of sorcery. The shadows in the cabins and corridors are coming to life. The voidsmen say they see strange writhing things lurking nooks and crannies at the edge of their vision. If they look away, the things spread over the room, gnawing on everything in their path and attacking the weakened infirm. The strange creatures cannot be caught, it is almost as if they sense they are being watched and sink into the many cracks between the machines and bulkheads. We have a willpower and a ballistic skill check. Willpower is the one that's better for us. Order that the monster be banished with faith and prayer. Good. The Ecclesiarchy mission on board the void ship held sermons in every corner of the haunted chamber. The many voiced chants and holy rituals manifested their power and the demons skulking in the cracks vanished without a trace. The crew was cheered and they praised the god emperor for his protection. Okay, just some experience I believe. Uh, I'm confused. I want to go... God, this is not easy. I want to go like this. Lord Captain, urgent report. We have received an astropathic message from Regent Aronto Orcelio. The navigators are concerned about the fate of Cassia, who disappeared from Iraq 5. The Regent is requesting an update on her current status, and he has also inquired about the possibility of a personal meeting to negotiate and to arrange a return of the Lady Navigator to her house. The psycho-emotional coding of the received message betrays acute concern, but it also contains something that the astropaths have failed to put into words. If you'll excuse my forthrightness, I feel it is necessary to tell House Orcelli the truth. Otherwise, a conflict with the Navis nobility is possible, which, given the current state of the current expanse, will only play into the hands of the enemies of the Imperium. How do they even know that I have Cassia? I wish I knew, Lord Captain. It is troubling indeed. Perhaps we have a spy on board. Or Regent Taronto is bluffing. In either case, I believe we should respond. Navigators are extremely powerful and useful allies to have. Tell House Orcelli that Cassia is safe and that the rogue trader would be honored to meet in person. I'll see to it, Lord Captain. The Astropaths will transmit your consent. Representatives of House Orcelli will be waiting for you on the capital World Dargonus. Ah, okay. Receiving members of the Navis ability is always a del delicate matter. Please make sure to discuss details of this mission with your Chancellor upon arrival. Okay, so something to do in Dargonus. Our colony seems to have progressed. I bring woeful news, Lord Captain. Prelate Hectar Hectarchius of the Order of the Hammer has passed away. Immediately after the launch of the Orbital Vox Spire, he entered the halls of recording and, having sat on the command throne, was granted a vision. For over three days, Prelate Hectarchius preached about Saint Cognatius uh, being reincarnated in a body made from the saint's own holy relics. The spiritual fleet deplete, uh, feat depleted Praletar Ectarchius' strength and he peacefully departed for the Emperor's throne shortly after the sermon's conclusion. The Order's elders believe this is to be a sign that Saint Cognatius' relics, currently stored on planets throughout the expanse, must be brought together. The Order is preparing for the election of a new prelate, under whose guidance it will undertake this holy mission. The majority of the votes are divided between Priest Prioress Lugnalia, well known for her fervor, and the merciful uh, Cellarer Tycon. The minority of the Order sees the Oikonomus Oik Nigmus, <laughs> humble and reasonable man, as their prelate. Okay. Does Prelate Tarkis' death not strike you as odd? I'm afraid it does not. 
The Steam Deck Tarkis began its service as a battle missionary and has long grown weary of the peaceful life befitting a man of his status. He yearned for a worthy spiritual feat, and when presented with a chance to serve as the voice of a saint, he gave what little strength remained. When he died, he was exhausted but content. Okay. And how does the Order intend to carry out uh, Saint Cognatius' mission? The Conclave aims to procure all the relics that once belonged to Saint Cognatius and uh, all that can possibly be procured. Given that the saint is a legendary figure, many items in the Chronos Expanse have an alleged connection to him. However, it seems unlikely that any of the relics owners will be eager to part with them. The answer to the question of how the Order of the Hammer is going to retrieve them depends on the identity of its next prelate. I wish to know more about the candidates. Prioress Lugnalia was converted by Actarchius on one of the Hidden Worlds. worlds. She then served as his bodyguard for many years and eventually became the protector of the Order's reliquary and the leader of its military branch. As for Brother Tycon, he is an aristocrat by birth, he had an excellent education and could have lived in luxury had he not renounced secular life for the sake of ascetic vows. He is intelligent, thoughtful, well-read and most importantly, genuinely merciful. I think I like him. Few things can be said about the Oikon... <laughs> Oikonomos Nigmas. He, was, he has never been famous for his prowess in battle or his sermons, but the monastery has never wanted for anything on his watch. He is a most reasonable and unobtrusive individual. There is another candidate as well, Elder Inokrant, but his flock is very small. Inokrant belongs to the Mal Malpians and was recently accepted into the order. The priesthood assumes that, as an abbot, he would not push hard for the searching of shrines, but, on the contrary, would preach the bliss of ignorance, hindering the comprehension of St. Cognatius wisdom. Okay, so we have two options here that don't have any gains or losses. I need an obedient prelate. This would give me two more profit factor and influential servant. At the start of each battle, the rotor is part against 10 momentum. That is nice. But not necessarily needed. But it's good, it's good. Or I can support Elder Inocrat. Efficiency, complacency, security, and in the prelate's prayers. All allies gain 3... Oh, plus 3 wounds. 7 times each and every day, prelate Inocrat says 77 prayers for the rotor's health. These are both good. But, so, mm, I'm confused. I kind of like Brother Tycon. He speaks very well of him. I don't even know what difference this makes. What will my companions say? I have sympathy for Prioress Lugnalia. Let her meet with Reverend Hieronymus on footfall. Should he accept her as a worthy leader, we ought to support her. A careful and sensible oikonomos sounds like a safer bet to me than a fanatic or a clever aristocrat. The voices say that he has a few paltry secrets, and knowledge of, this, of those secrets guarantees as his loyalty. Brother Tycon, he and I have met back when he was called Tycon Drivestem. Oh, he's a Drivestem. He wasn't a monk back then, he was a grandson and heir to Urbend, governor of Dargonus, an honorable young man with a spark in his eyes. His ascension would mean much to the dive stems. Oh, okay, now we have more options. Let Lugnelia meet with Hieronymus, if he, pro he approves of her candidate, we will support her. 5,000 more reputation with the Drusians. That's actually quite good. Idira, uncover some of Nygma's little secrets, I need an obedient prelate. Oh, so now we even get more security. Or this one. Man. Mm. So this one is unknown, right? We don't know what it's going to give us, if anything, at some point. I am very tempted to go for this. Okay, but I I'm going to try and... On some level, I kind of would prefer if this wasn't shown. <clears throat> I mean, for practical reasons, I want this to be shown by the game. I think it's a good choice, but it it makes me make decisions that are not based on my role-playing. It's based on efficiency, right? Because I look at this, I see profit. Not only profit factor, but profit in everything. And it, it points me towards this one. I will try and go for the role-playing factor, 
Uh, Abelard C2 with the house drives him. Thanks for the assistance we provide to their kin. Will do. I bet Urban never thought the boy would be of any use to the family. Now we will have to endure a decade of him boasting about the drive stem blood that always strives for great heights. <laughs> and we got some contracts. Brother Tycon has been chosen as the prelate of the Order of the Hammer. Peaceful emissaries departed from Foulstone for many planets to form alliances and reinforce spiritual ties with the holders of St. Cognatius relics. This diplomatic mission will undoubtedly require a sizable financial support. House Trifsim has been informed of the honor granted to their family and has humbly requested to cover all expenses related to Prelate Tycon's endeavors. Ah, maybe that's what this does? If I went for the other ones, it would cost us? I don't know. So, this is a new quest. Now we have Tycon's Diplomacy. This was very good. Wait. I... Uh, I don't think this is an expense. I think this is just if we have profit factor above 30. And unquenchable greed. Yeah, I don't like this one. No. Okay, I'm gonna quick save because... If this removes 30 profit factor from me, I'm gonna say no. We have 45. We still have 45. So we gain 5,000 repetition with everyone. That's actually very nice. That is very nice. And uh, so this one, I don't care for it. I'm not gonna lose people to gain provisions. I have already a lot of them. This one also no. This one I don't have enough people for it. Okay. So, oh, I haven't come here yet. Really? I haven't come here yet. Okay. Let me just check this out. Pulvis Platinum. I must have missed it. Master Helmsman Ravor. Lord Captain, the Vox systems intercepted a distress signal coming from an Imperial vessel. The system contains a ship that belongs to the planetary fleet of Dargonus, the capital of the Von Valences dynasty. The transmission is repeated at regular intervals, but the message itself is corrupted. A cacophony of requests for help, groans and shouts, what in the world? Is it your name that they are shouting, Lord Captain? Oh, it is. It is. Not a question. It is. Okay, we have Space Dust. Gutted Void Chip. <clears throat> Before I forget. So, we completed this. So, now what we have? Wait, what? I'm confused. Oh! Oh no, wait. Good tidings blocks the bonfires, but doesn't actually block the other one. But given that this one blocks the Maglev railways, yeah, I'm gonna say no. I think I want this one. Okay, but we can't do anything else here for now. How is Janice looking? We have the science of virtue. We get the highs of joy, joy use. Sanctioned psyker. Ugh. The weather psy ratings increase by one against demons and for each rank of dogmatic. That is actually cool. That is actually cool, yeah. It's for Heinrich, so we're not really going to use it, but... And this one blocks this one. So I think I'm going to say no. Yeah. And Dargonus, how are you looking? We did the Restoration 1. We have access to a lot of them. Uh, what? Oh, we get four people. Or... We lose complacency, but gain efficiency and gain also provisions. 
significantly tighten production quotas, dooming laggards to being processed into corp starch, which will encourage the most diligent servants. Damn. <laughs> okay. Doctrine of rationality. According to the new doctrine, the disenfranchised will be servitized or disposed of through hazardous work. Efficiency. And let's remember, we don't have to choose just one, right? We're going to get one of each, basically. Lo uh? More and more ships arrive in orbit around Argonus. This agreement, the agreement with the nav Navy allows the deployment of a permanent dock for void ships and repositories. Lord Captain's void ship gains a Pirate's Bane feature, plus 5% critical hit chance against pirates. What is this? The oh, it's very nice. We are escorted by an armed frigate. <laughs> that would help out in ship battles. Security and weapons, but it blocks the filth of the expanse. It also gives me an escort ship. More and more ships arrive in orbit around the Argonus. The reduction of duties and re the reigning in of customs will allow the black market to flourish, able to compete directly with footfall. So we get... A lot of stuff, actually. Profit... Okay, so wait. Plus 20% scrap for winning space battles. It's nice. We also get escort ship. Profit factor. We lose security, though. And Fellowship of the Void. And this one is all upside. Okay, this is all upside. Yeah, I'm gonna go for this one. Uh, requirements. Again, I don't I don't think this consumes them. It's just a requirement. So Prometheum is at 9. Okay, good. I will start with this one because I really like this idea here for the escort ship. And I think that's all. Yep. Okay, cool. Let's explore. I'm gonna quick save in case there's a space battle and I get killed. Fuel. I'll start with the dust and I'm gonna go for that one last. More fuel. More fuel. <clears throat> that is a lot of fuel. Uh, again, I think I'm going to save my extractums for other stuff right now. Whoa. Oh, and we leveled up. That's right. I have to look at the level ups. <clears throat> so take these people. Gutted Void Ship. Okay, so let, let me look over the level ups as usual. I will start with my main character. We have a characteristic and a common talent. So let me just choose these. Okay, so for my main character, I'm going to be taking toughness. <laughs> I'll explain why in a second. And it will not die. So increasing our wounds by half of the character's level rounded up. Since this is a common talent, uh, we don't really have a lot that's super uh, specific to tactician or officer to take so anything that just generally helps out is going to be a benefit for us nimble would also be a very good choice i think but for right now just increasing in his number of wounds helping him keep uh, stay alive i think is going to be a good thing to do as for the characteristics i can't pick fellowship anymore at least not for right now uh, i have ballistic skill at 50 but i'm not really shooting my weapon ever so I think I'm simply going to try and give him some more resiliency. Try and make him stay alive a little bit longer with more toughness. Not sure if it's going to be the correct choice, but we will try it out. Wait, what happened? Oh, ah, apply. Moving on to Abelard. So for him, I'm going to go for more weapon skill. Here I can actually pick anything I want. Uh, I have Strength and Toughness both at 60. Uh, naturally, any of these would be a benefit for Abelard, but such is the same thing that can be said for the weapon skill. So, 
Uh, it increases parry and reduces the enemy parry and dodge chance against melee attacks. So this will be both helpful in an offensive purpose as well as a defensive purpose. And it will also increase the chances of scoring critical hit in melee combat. He's actually been killing a lot more than I expected. So increasing this I think is going to be a good way to just further improve his combat prowess. And for the common talents, I'm going to be taking something I should have taken a long time ago, which is Combat Master. Enemies gain no melee superiority bonus against this character, which is very good. And I'm kind of considering maybe even Nimble. I know it's not really his thing, but it's just an additional defensive stat. But I'm actually looking at this one here, Dual Weapon Combat. The character can attack with the second weapon in their current weapon set in addition to the usual one attack per round. This attack suffers a 20 penalty to weapon skill and ballistic skill and costs 1 AP more. So, naturally, it's expensive to use, but it's an additional free attack. And if the other weapon is a ranged weapon, like let's say a pistol, right? Uh, that would also count towards versatility stacking. I, I think I'm going to explore this one fairly soon. But right now I'm going to just go for Combat Master here and... Make him a little bit tankier. Moving on to Pascal. Mr. Pascal, I'm going to be giving him more perception and I'm also going to be giving him it will not die. So just more wounds as a common talent is a good thing to have. And perception, it's because I cannot take any more ballistic skill and it will also round out our perception stat here. It was a 35, it's going to go up to 40. Something that I also noticed that made me very, very sad is that I had picked over here Steel of the Forge. While wearing heavy armor, Forge world characters gain 1 MP, 1 deflection and cannot fall prone, which is very, very nice. But something I had forgotten to give him prior to that was heavy... what is it? Armor proficiency. Allows the wearing of heavy armor. But I also forgot about this. Prerequisites Strength 45. So I know a lot of you have already probably said to me and thought to yourselves, no, you cannot take that thing over there because you can't wear this. And I thought this didn't have a, a prerequisite when I, when I picked this one here, which was a big fumble on my part. And I was like thinking, okay, but if I just give him strength right now, I have a, a pair of gloves that give him plus 10 strength, so I could use it. But we don't even get strength as a level up uh, characteristic. So I'm kind of just going with the flow and assuming this was a mistake. Uh, I don't feel like I want to respect right now just because of this particular talent. May happen at some point, who knows. So for right now I'm just going to ignore this here. I'm going to be sad with myself, but yeah. Perception, it will not die. That's level up done. Lady Cassia. Lady Cassia will be taking an additional bonus to her fellowship score. Given that she's an officer, it will increase her, um, her effectiveness as an officer. We cannot take willpower anymore, because if we could, we would. <laughs> um, and for our common talent, I'm going to be taking Blood Augury. So enemies damaged by the navigator suffer plus two times the navigator's perception bonus, which is six right now, additional damage from warp damage. And this bonus stacks... This one damage stacks for each hit. So now we have the, the eye attack, we have point of curiosity, we have um, notch of purpose, all of these are damaging effects. So just stacking more and more and more percent damage taken, I think it's a very good thing, especially because it doesn't say additional damage from warp damage from Cassia. It's from any targets <coughs> or from any caster. So even Idira, is getting buffed by this. I like it. We're going to try it out. Argenta. Argenta will take more ballistic skill, putting her up to 70. And this was actually very easy to pick. <laughs> Overpower. When firing heavy weapons, critical hit chance is increased by ballistic skill bonus percent. So in this case, it will be 7%. And critical damage is increased by 3 times uh, ballistic skill bonus. So, 3 times 7, 21, 21% more damage from her critical hits. This is amazing. 
and I think we've seen that the heavy bolter is actually a very good weapon to have. <laughs> so let's take that. And finally, we have Idira. So for Idira, I'm going to be giving it some more perception. Uh, same thing here, I'm going to round this off to plus 5 to have 60. Uh, I'm not even sure if it's the best thing to do. I'm actually even considering if it wouldn't just be better for her to essentially ignore everything that's not willpower and maybe just buff her strength up so she can actually use heavy armor and give her deflection which I think would actually kind of combine well with Perils of the Warp that she triggers. So when she triggers the Perils of the Warp, if damage is dealt, deflection can mitigate some of it, armor can mitigate some of it, assuming it mitigates damage from the Warp, I'm not actually sure. But I think it might even be better than anything else because Ballistic Skill I was considering because I picked at some point here Psychic Barrage, Whenever the Psyker uses damaging Psychic Power on targets are 6 cells or farther from the Psyker, they take an additional 2 damage. Based on the damage that she's dealing right now, 2 damage is irrelevant. Even if it were 10, well, 10 it would be nice, but like 4 or 5 more damage, I'm not sure if it would be worth it. And we're not shooting weapons anyway, because she's such a beast casting. I don't think it makes much of a difference. So, no stat other than willpower is really important for her. So maybe even just giving more strength for heavy armor or more toughness for more HP might have just been the better option. But again, I don't really have the choice right now to... What am I doing? Uh, to buff up strength here. So I'll just go for more perception here. And I was picking... Uh, tell me I didn't forget. Ah, power conduit. After triggering Psychic Phenomena or Perils of the Warp the first time each turn, the Psyker's next Psychic Power costs one less action point. She does trigger this often enough, so we're gonna go for this one for action economy. There we go. With that, let's see what awaits us. In the gutted void ship. Follow my lead. Well, death awaits us. I still... I still can't believe it let me stay, Lord Captain. You didn't get rid of me. I'll prove. I'll live up to the trust you've placed in me. This person's body is covered in unpleasant looking growths, scabs and ulcers. They look like fresh mutations. And we do have some mutants here. Running around. Oh, there's more over there. Uh, okay. Let's just face them head on. I mean, this is where the majority of them are. I'm kind of hoping that this represents full cover. I imagine it would. And this guy is just a single enemy, so I'll kind of ignore him. And I suppose we can start the fight by going here. But going there the correct way, please. Take a knee there we go. Bow before me. So what do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 enemies. Uh, none of them seem particularly dangerous. Agile mutants have a lot of movement points. Spitter mutants, I imagine they can, you know, acid spit. Inflict the melting effect. Reduces deflection and armor. Okay, that sucks. Okay, let's just... This shouldn't be a very difficult fight, so... You go over there. Idira can go over there. Cassia... Well, I want Cassia to do a lot of stuff here. I'm gonna place it... Uh, no. If I place it here, the burst will shoot her. So just stay there. Abelard, I guess he can go over there. Pascal can stay over here. And my main character can go over here as well. Alright. Nothing I can't do. Take a turn, Argenta. You have 
beautiful line of sight for everybody in the area. So we're gonna go for concentrated fire. But let me just think. Uh, I always forget this. Single shot makes this cost two, which means one, two, three, four. Yeah. Okay, so single shot on somebody. Doesn't really matter who. I'll do it. There you go. Swap to the heavy bolter. Go for a wildfire with devastating to knock some people on the ground and shoot everybody in this area here. Really, you only hit two people? It's kind of sucky, but okay. Faith without deeds is worthless. Cassia. <clears throat> so, can you do this? Oh man, I hate the slopes. Okay, it doesn't matter, I can do this. Which also works, I suppose. Okay. So, let's go for our zones first. You can put this here. And the front line can go over here. It's what I'm going to be dealing the most damage right now. Me. If you insist, and the back line captain, can go there. I am a navigator, not a servitor. Kill zone stratagem can go over there. And why is this happening? She can't use bring it down. It's so weird. Yeah, because th this isn't her seize the initiative turn, because she cannot use this. I think this is bugged again, which kind of sucks, but okay. Uh, buff. And move forward. Can I bring... Man, I really hate verticality in this game. It's so messed up. I can target all of these, bring them kind of closer to Abelard. Uh, okay, sure, I'll do that. Battlefields are always drowned They're in They're all Scott. over there. We pass. Now I think we have seized the initiative. I believe it doesn't even say. Okay, so I can do this again if I want to. Bring them all into this area. I'm not accustomed to being ordered around. Did this guy resist? Uh, really? Damn. Okay, he rolled really high. Okay, so <clears throat> I want to buff Idira. That's something for sure that I want to do. If I may. And I think I will just. Do voice of command and give her an extra turn. Me? If you insist, Lord Captain. Let's get some resolve going. But of course. Let me think. Oh, come on, lady. Really? You cannot see them? <laughs> it is so messed up when this happens. How can she not see them? This isn't that hard. If I swap stuff, she can do it. Oh well. Um, okay, so I think I want warp speed on... Argenta. And... I think deal the most damage or do I just kill someone because this should kill yeah, it does kill um, I think I'll just kill somebody now nah, who am I kidding let's, let's spread damage here <clears throat> or can I even target those that hits four enemies that's even better okay 
Was was that you? Or good. And now I'm gonna mark somebody as prey because if they die, she gets an extra turn. And let's be done with that. Stop it! And Cassia, I think you're gonna move over here. Yeah. Be careful not to cross my gaze. Do your worst. Spontaneous mutation, what is that? Okay. Oh, really? You attack twice. Dude. Okay, I may have gotten a little bit cocky with this. Time to prove my metal. This is a lot. <laughs> this is a lot of damage. Holy crap. Did not expect that much. Our momentum went down. <laughs> okay, not great. Not great at all. Okay, let me see here. Oh, maybe I, maybe I, I could have done this here. That was my bad. That was my bad. Okay, so more resolve. On it. Uh, who plays after this? That guy. That guy is gonna kill Abelard. So I think I will prioritize healing him a little bit here. Anything I is. Really <clears throat> Uh huh. Let's not die, please. So it's this guy here, correct? Correct. Can I blow him up? I can blow him up. So I will. Uh, I think I might as well get some temporary wounds by doing this. Okay. Like this. Unfortunate turn he didn't fate. die. He will die to poison at least. And... Okay, so who is this? Oof. That guy? That's, that's terrible for us. That guy's prone. This is very bad for us. Uh, 15 movement points. He's gonna bring down Idira. He will bring down Idira. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I think I'm gonna stay here and I'm gonna try and increase my dodge chance. But of course. And hope that that helps us out. Farewell. Okay, he died. Yeah, I know, I know. Dodge Idira! <coughs> no! The whispers. She's alive. I me. will take it. Okay, now what do I do? These guys are playing afterwards. This guy as well. This guy is over there. He's gonna kill Idira probably. Okay, let's see. So my last shot was a burst fire. So I want to use a single shot to increase my versatility stacks. I think I'll just go for the one with the highest... Well, this looks good here. Or this one, because he has killed zone strategy and we might just die to this. Doubt is for the weak. <laughs> okay, not horrible. Let's move on to our heavy bolter. So we are in danger from this guy killing Abelard. But these two are also very dangerous, so I have to do something about that. Okay, so let's go for wildfire. As the emperor commands, I act. And concentrated and okay. devastating. And let's try and burst them down. This is right. None can escape the emperor's I think we judgment. killed all three. Yeah, I'm happy with that. <laughs> I am happy with that. <laughs> Um, this one is gonna be annoying. Is he? He is poisoned. Let's see if I can. 
Wait, why can I shoot again? I shot once, then I did wildfire, and now I can shoot again? Why? I don't know. I will take it. Faith without deeds is worthless. Okay. Please don't kill Abelard. You're gonna kill him, aren't you? Just a Maybe not. Did knock him prone though, which is also awful. No. Okay, good. Okay, I'm playing. What do I do here? I kind of want to give it maybe to Abelard. So we can start killing some enemies. If I give it to Argenta, she's going to just burst through Idira. Well, I mean, there is a way that she doesn't burst through Idira. Let, let me try this then. Hmm. Okay, take that. And take this. And take that. And I suppose I can give you Inspire as well. All too easy. And take an extra turn. I can't do. Now, I'm gonna get 7 MP and my goal is to come over here and burst this way. Okay, so get over here. Uh, how would this go about? Yeah, I think I can kill them both with a lot of damage. Okay, so go there and apply wildfire. Okay, also, I'm I'm a little bit uh, confused with what's happening here. Why does it only cost one and two to use my heavy bolter? And this costs zero and one. I feel like I'm missing something here. Oh, because I have run and gun. Okay, <clears throat> never mind. I'm silly. So I can get over here. I can even burst them once. No, no, no. Okay, so go over there. Wildfire. I, th I think this... I may have used this poorly. Okay, let's see. Okay. I think they died. Um, funny enough, I... Okay, fair enough. Uh, run and gun will reduce the cost of my next attack, even if it's a free attack from wildfire. That is something to keep in mind. So, if I have a single shot right now, I'm gonna get my stacks up to 9, which means this costs 0. So, stay superiority. I am his will made manifest. And single shot... Ugh. Really? 10% only? That's awful. Get travel and slaughter them. What if I do this? Let's just try to overload with bullets. Maybe not worth it. It's <laughs> okay. So, what if I do this? I move over here and do a deadly shot or a dead eye shot. Doesn't make much of a difference. He's very hard to hit. So I'm thinking about a sign objective over there. Forge ahead! And I will still try to shoot him or maybe someone else. Well. Okay. 
Oh, I have an extra turn because I... Right. Because she had an heroic act. So I can actually come over here. And shoot the guy. And my hit chance is horrible. Holy crap. Uh, still. So, press the advantage. I can only use this on someone else. Take aim. I, I, can, I might as well just give it to Argenta. Not a problem for me. And blam. Nothing I can't do. Opposing me nice. was your biggest mistake. Very nice. Uh, assign the objective on this All guy. Might as well. Pass. Pascal. Can you help our friend Abelard here in any way, shape or form? If I would move over here and I wanted to do a brutal strike... It does not save Abelard, and it might just kill him afterwards. So... Piercing shot. Okay, let me think. If I came over here and I burst this way... Okay. Advancing. So, pray. And... Piercing shot for 100% over penetration. I can exploit him. My vow is to serve. 65, 12. Precise attack. Or I'm gonna go for cold bolts. And burst here. The scriptural prophecy. Okay, good, we killed one. Uh, we have Wild Hunt, don't really care for it. I think if I give the extra turn to Abelard from Cassia, this fight is over, so... Not gonna worry with anything else here. And I can even try something else, which is... If I come over here and do this... Nope, sucks. What about Point of Curiosity? That works on that one as well. Okay, so... Do it. I didn't want you to go down there, but okay. This almost worked. Okay, okay, th this fight is over, let's not complicate this. Um, take this, take that. Let's... You can't charge him? Really? Okay, then just move over here with charge, I guess. It will be done. Let's sworn Victory enemy. Is imminent. Let's smack. Your back and call. Okay. Let's Say superiority? No. Let's kick instead. Okay. Let's endure. And now I have to think about this. Restores all AP and MP and gains 3 MP until the end of the turn. They don't lose MP after performing attacks and have no limit on the number uh, on melee weapon attacks this turn. Okay. So. Do this. We'll rule the stars themselves. Get over here. Don't have a lot of movement points though, which might be a little bit concerning here. And smack a the guy. Sound approach. Good. Let's build some versatility as well if possible. I will do my duty. Reduced to dust. I don't know what just happened here with the camera. I can move over here. I've seen worse battles than this in my time. Strike him again. At your back and forth. And... I could go for... I have endured already, so... I think I'm good. It will be done. Blam blam. I've suffered worse. He takes a lot of damage from our willpower thingy. I forgot to use this. Kill zone. Isn't this a job for the serfs? 
And let's try this. Me. If you insist, Lord Captain. Is he stunned? He is stunned. Good. Argenta. The enemies of the Emperor will be undone. This is why I was chosen. Doubt is for the weak. <laughs> okay, let's swap weapons then. As the Emperor Wildfire. commands, I act. This is why I was chosen. Mm -hmm. Strike is a prayer. And done. Hey, this fight was a little bit more damaging than I expected, to be honest. I, I, I kind of... I was playing fast and loose. I didn't expect him to deal a lot of damage. I thought this planet was a, a you know, an early planet. Well, that that will teach me about assuming, Victory doesn't it? Awaits. Did I mention that my whispers Should not assume su jokes? such things. Jokes that once said aloud make your eyes bleed and blood curdle. You guys can <laughs> talk about there. black comedy. None Let's shall call. stand in my way. They do deal a lot of damage. Don't care about the chain axes. Don't care about that. It's about time. My success is an irrefutable certainty. Staff of House Cassini. All allies targeted by navigator powers gain plus navigator's perception bonus divided by two additional MP on their next turn. It also has Infusing 7. Allies targeted by Navigator Powers gain a plus 7 bonus to all their characters until the end of the Navigator's turn. This bonus stacks and is prolonged until the Navigator's next turn every time it stacks. Kind of a complicated way of working with this. I think I like mine better because mine gives me willpower. Sorry, 10 willpower, 5 perception. This one gives 5 willpower and 10 perception. And willpower is more important. This action cape. This cape lowers all enemies' perception by weather's fellowship bonus within a 5 cell radius. It's for a vanguard, I would say. So, not much interest in any of these items. Books and items of luxury. The legality of some of them is questionable, but the net... The Navis nobility often turns a blind eye to such diversions. A new challenge for me? Clear the passage. Nothing's impossible for this old officer. Okay. Break them oh god. Close rank, not letting me to the sarcophagus. Whoa. What is going on here? Are these pirates or something? A navigator. Follow my lead. There's a navigator here. The navigator's throne. The handles are extremely worn with visible marks left by nails. Evidence of a terrifying hour spent locked in battle with the power of the warp. Okay, so... I don't really expect much of a fight here because there's only two people. But again, let's not assume. Navigator. The leader of the Ravaged Ship's crew wipes the sweat from his brow in a motion characteristic of navigators. Not with his whole hand, but with two fingers moving from left to right and back so as to not touch his third eye by accident. This movement is the only sign of fatigue he allows himself. His posture is immaculate, shoulders wide, eyes front, as if he did not just emerge from a grueling battle and is simply greeting you on the bridge or an, on an uneventful day. My greetings, your lordship. There is no need for introductions. I know the heirs of the Von Valenches line by sight. I am Han of House Cassini, the navigator of this vessel, and, as the senior surviving officer, I assumed command after the incident. Now, the navigator, what an unexpected and pleasant meeting, considering the circumstances. And uh, decorously dips his head to Cassia. I have not had the honor of being personally acquainted with you, but of course I know the emblem of House Orcelio. How fares the honorable regent? 
Cassia or Celio. She offers a reserved nod. Cordially, cordi cordiality will not disguise the ice blue coldness of your word, Navigator Han. However, I will tell Regent Aron so that you inquired after his health. You may pass on my best wishes to Novator Cassini. And now, let's set the pleasantries aside. I am sure the rogue trader would like to ask you a few questions. As Ahn speaks, others glare at you with, your, with our attention. Up close, you can plainly see that every one of them is a mutant. Their faces and bodies bear the mark of incredibly grotesque deformities, the same as the muttering madman who attacked you. However, Han's associates seem perfectly clear-eyed, showing no signs of madness. Man, like I said, Dogmat's gonna be fun. What happened to the ship and the crew, Han? This ship is assigned to the port of Dargonus. Some time ago, the captain was instructed to deliver a package, urgently, by hand, to you, your lordship. We were even shown a pic of your face. A photographic image or playback recording taken from a device called the Pict Recorder. The navigator's voice seems calm, yet there is tension in his eyes, which are trained on you. The disaster struck during the warp jump. I will never know all the details, as I was preoccupied with my primary duties, but for some reason the captain decided to open the package. That, as you may have noticed, had a most destructive impact on the crew. Han frowns. The package contained a chaos artifact, a chaos bomb if you will. The moment it was removed from its protective cocoon, the crew began to lose their minds and mutate. The first to be afflicted was the captain and the senior officers, but the effect spread with incredible speed. Every deck was consumed by it, every last one. The raging mutants, no longer sane, damaged many systems. The ship was in distress and would have almost certainly been destroyed had I not resorted to making an emergency exit from the warp. The people you see here are the only survivors, or rather, the only ones who were able to retain both their lives and sanity. I gathered everyone I could, isolated the source of dan danger and sent out a stress signal. We were adrift, waiting for help to come and fighting off mad crew members. Then you arrived. So the Chaos Bomb package was meant for me, who's the sender? As far as I am aware, the order came from Conrad Voidry, that bitch. The master of whispers in the Rogue Traders retinue. It is likely that he arranged the delivery, either personally or through intermediaries. Abelard's face turns a deep... Puss? Puss? <laughs> that blasted traitor beat us to Dargonus and is now free to act with impunity. It would not surprise me to find out that this was the work of sorcery. How else could he have reached the world in such a short time? Han pauses, then adds bluntly, almost brazenly. Your reaction suggests that you were not expecting a package of this sort. That is good to know. I had almost convinced myself that the Rotate was deliberately collecting Chaos artifacts. I am not tainted by Chaos and I knew nothing of this package. I give you my word as a Rogue Trader. He gives you a searching look, then bows his head. I beg your pardon, your lordship. I saw a terrible death of the entire crew with my own eyes. I was forced to bring the ship out of the wharf by means of an emergency maneuver, and then I had to fight my former comrades, insane and twisted. I am tired. However, the sender wanted all of this. Han makes a sweeping gesture at the destruction and the corpses of crew members around him, to happen to your ship, not ours. Where were you? Uh, were you affected by the mutations and madness? Well, that depends. I was born a mutant, you see. Han smiles grimly and wearily. Navigators are taught to resist the influence of chaos, and so, I ha and so I have been as best I could. But I will be frank with you. I cannot be certain that I have avoided it completely. There have been no visible indications. Yet. Aware this test succeeded. All signs point to Han telling the truth. But you also notice clear evidence of just how difficult it is for him to struggle against the corruption. He is extremely tired, practically exhausted. What is the artifact now? The tension in his posture and gaze becomes even more noticeable. I have placed it inside the protective sarcophagus, more reliable than the previous repository. Unfortunately, an artifact as powerful as this one could not be destroyed under these circumstances. Or rather, I had no assurance that it would not dis disintegrate every one of us and scatter us across several light hours of neighboring space. But once we are off the ship, I will absolutely find a way to destroy the vile thing. Curiosity killed the cat, but I kind of want to check what's inside, but if this is what happens, no. Okay, I would still like to take a look. Face it, you can't leave this ship. The corruption of the Chaos Bomb did afflict you, albeit not as strongly as the others, and you know this, I can tell by your reaction. 
Trust me, I will take the sarcophagus that holds the artifact and deliver it to those who can destroy it safely. Okay. Han gives you a scrutinizing look, then nods. I will have to take, it to take you at your word, as I have no other choice. But what will become of me, and of the remaining crew? Okay, so... You can come with me, but the remnants of the crew will be terminated. These people are beyond salvation. They're corrupted by chaos. Iconoclast. I am taking you aboard my ship. There, my word is law, and no one will dare to take issue with you, despite the mutations. Doesn't um, refer to the rest of the crew, though. But Iconoclast is my choice. Thank you. Han salutes you before adding, Lord Captain. Okay. We got one person. Cool. And the loot. Nothing special. Yeah, we no longer have the choice to... Cast to... your eye there. Huh? We no longer have the choice to touch a sarcophagus. Ah, goods over there. Okay, cool. They were hidden. Expeditionary footwear. Whenever the wearer uses navigator power, they gain a 15% dodge until the end of the round and it stacks. Oh my god, this is so good. This is so good. At the start of the weather's turn, they gain 20% dodge until the end of the round. Yeah, but I'm going to be using more than one power each round, so... Yeah, there's not even a contest there. I may want to give those boots to someone else, though. And I also noticed that this guy doesn't have another ring. Uh, why don't you have another ring? Because I guess neither of them are particularly useful? Eh, take this. Uh, uh. Let me see. I don't really need that much movement points on my main character. So I think I might as well give him... Uh... This one. And give the movement points. I kind of want to give them to Abelard, but making, but making charge cost one less I think is more useful overall. Okay, so... Maybe just to him? I think this is fine on her. Yours are... Better overall. You have these, and I have these. Okay, so I guess you can take them. Sure. Cool boots, very cool boots. Very good boots. I'll lay claim to the stars. And a bunch of cargo, okay. A cool little event here. I liked it. Stupid fight, nearly killed me. None <laughs> shall stand <laughs> or in nearly my killed way. some of my friends, but thankfully not the case. Okay, so as usual, my friends, this is going to be the end of this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, thank you so much for being here with me in the channel, watching some Rogue Trader. If you have questions or suggestions, anything like that, leave a comment below. If you are enjoying the content, consider subscribing for more, many more videos coming out soon. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe everyone.